We just had a lot of rain in New York City and I want to show you how the garden is looking. It's been raining here for several days already and then this past couple days we just had a tropical storm and it had a lot of water in the city. We had floatings everywhere but thankfully here where I live in the garden everything is okay so far at least in my backyard. I haven't checked the plot garden yet but we are going to do that together in a little bit. We are going to start here at the backyard and then move to the plot garden a little later but this is a little overview on how the gardens looking the seeds that are sold in the green stock actually have germinated look at that look how big the seedlings actually are already those are the daikon this is the lettuce but there's actually some brassicas growing there and this basil that's taking over everything i have some other seedlings over there and some more on this planter as well the reason why these planters are not looking as nice as they as they usually do is again i was gone for a long time and they were not watered for a whole for over a month but a couple things on them survived this ginormous basil plant here she has been growing here since the spring and it's so big it's one plant here in this pocket with lots of branches and has kind of taken over everything and then this broccoli that i have harvested in the spring right over here and then sending all of these side branches now in the fall some strawberries more basil in there so this guy survived the summer and when i came back and had some time i went ahead and sold some seeds i direct seeded because we didn't have any time or chance to make transplants so that's why there's a lot of little seedlings everywhere on these planters as well and they're looking good i have already actually tinned up some of them so these radishes here i had sown two seeds per hole you see there's a little stump in here it's because i cut this one up when it was smaller and now it's giving some extra space for these other guys to grow so i did eat those you can eat those little sprouts I kind of was able to get a handful and then use it for dinner. So I just like to use it as a little garnish on the food sometimes. So this basil here, I had the plan to actually cut them, but did you see what just happened? There's a little bee in there. The bees are loving the basil flowers and I feel bad to actually take it out since there's not so many flowers in my garden anymore and I've been seeing so many of them in here. I was planning to do a harvesting video today together with the garden tour, but I think I'm gonna let them stay there for a few more days, especially after this big rain. Now oh, there's another bee here resting. I'll let them enjoy this plant for a little longer. There's another one over there. See when it got close, you start seeing lots of them, but she will stay there. One plant, you gotta see how the middle is a little bent. It was the rain, it was a little bit too heavy. Oops, and it's full of water, so it's looking a little funny right now, but still being strong for the time that's been actually growing there. Here on this side, I actually was saying this whole time since I planted this that this was ginger. I really thought it was, but someone was telling me it's probably turmeric by the way that the leaves look like. I have a call, like in my head, I have actually remember sprouting a ginger putting in a pot. I'm not gonna dig it up right now because it's very white. I don't want to get my hands dirty. But maybe I did it with turmeric and just don't remember. I don't know. We'll see. I guess once I harvest this, we'll find out. But it's growing pretty well. It's a lot bigger than the ginger I had last year, which I did look at pictures and the leaves were different. So it could be turmeric. Down here on this little potted area, things are looking a little shaggy, but let's but look at this. Look how many shishito peppers I have from a volunteer plant. So I didn't know what pepper it was before it just grew in here in this pot and now i have all of these shishitos that i will probably harvest very very soon let them dry out a bit and i planted some shoysome in here on this pot but it's full of weeds so i gotta take care of that the rebecca that i cut back pretty heavily before i left for the summer it's kind of having a come back now i have some flowers new flowers here let's see what we'll do it's looking very pretty early summer but i think i might have cut it back too far i don't know the carrots in here they're self-seeded so those carrots you had a big carrot plant last year here it is the stock and it went to seed this year i have a bunch of volunteer carrots growing so i'm gonna let them and this guy this big 
carrot here <laughs> is from the same time that I had these other ones. But this one didn't go to seed. It was a little smaller. Actually, I'm going to pull it out right now. Let's see. Last time I pulled the carrot in here, it was kind of embarrassing. It was so small. Oh, this one is split. All of this water. I can already see. But, oof, hard to do it with my left hand. <laughs> it's small again. I don't know, you guys. I have a... Oh, no, I broke it. Oops, only half of it came out. The other half, as you can see, the other half stayed there. Oh, well, it's going to be food for the other plants right now. Let's see if I'll have better luck with these guys here. They germinated by themselves, so I guess in the right timing. I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some of these carrots for the fall. I don't know if they will overwinter into spring, because they might go to seed again, but that's how it's looking. <laughs> this is my <laughs> broken carrot. This is a nice top though. I will keep it in here and wash it later. Coming back, these other potted things are not looking so exciting, but it's all right. So I have some porcelain in here that I decided to let it grow to harvest some because it's supposed to be really good for you. It's just a weed grew by itself here. But I want to add to some dishes. There's another bit back here that's coming back. This is a straw flower that's starting to bloom again also. Coming back from the summer before the wedding but I cut it pretty heavily down there. It's just growing back again. There's some Volunteer Nasturtium in here also. Probably fought, fell from the green stalk. And these are some daikon radishes that I also planted after I plant some seeds in the green stalk as well. This tomato plant here, it's from, it's a daughter of a plant that I had last year, Consulto Genovese, that did so well here in the garden and I saved seeds for. So I planted again and it's now full of green tomatoes again. There's lots of tomatoes. This was a little, it was not doing very well and then I came back from vacation you know, kind of nurture it back again, and it's doing amazing. So I'm not pruning it, but it's full of fruit. There's another one down there. Now, back in here, on this side, we had the pear tree here. We have the pear tree that's not looking great. It's never, never looks great. You always get this fungus, this rusted, this red rust fungus. So it's a little bit sad, actually. There's a little pear in there. I didn't really produce a lot of pears this year, but I did prune really hard. In the beginning in the spring so we'll see i'm in a rental apartment i wish i could actually cycle this tree out and put another tree here that's healthier but you know it's okay my landlord has to give him permission to do that for now I'll leave it in there and here on this side on the raised bed i'm gonna give you an overview first of everything then i'll explain what's going on things are looking well it's very nice and green um, I did weed or took a lot of stuff out before we had this big storm, so it's looking a little bare, but I also took a lot of the tomato leaves out. This tomato here, this one tomato plant that's growing here, it's a volunteer. Did not plant there and there. It was a seed from last year that fell in the ground and has self-seeded and came back. So this, I think, is an atomic grape tomato or it could be a mix. You could have mix mixed it up with the other things that I had. I haven't had any ripened ones yet. The squirrels ate some of the ones that were here. They just took a bite and left like they always do. But these are kind of turning a little bit of color, but had so much rain. I want to kind of leave them in there and see if they will ripen. But that's a lot of tomatoes. I would be happy to harvest them if they do become mature. They are a lot farther away than these guys over here. So at least that's good. But the flowers, I did clean up a lot of stuff that was here. I have dahlias still here in the back. This is uh, Linda's baby. Got a little knocked out by the rain. Look how the stems are bending. And I have actually put some ribbons and some that I want to save for seed. So this one is opening the center. I'm not harvesting. I'm gonna, not going to harvest them anymore, not as much. And I'll see if I can save seed for it. Maybe be a little late, but we'll see. Especially after all this rain, I heard that the pollen is not very good after, when, if it's wet. So we'll see what happens, but I'll try anyway. And then back then, I have the red dahlia. I forgot the name. It came in a mix, so I don't really know exactly what it is yet. But it's in the previous garden tours if you want to check it out. And then here on this side, this is the second flush of zinnia that I actually planted before I went on vacation, just scattered some seeds in there and one of them grew and is looking pretty nice. This is the red wine variety and it's going to put some more flowers soon. 
I really wish the garden had a lot more flowers by this time, but it is what it is. That's what's happening right now. Um, we'll see if we'll have better luck in October. But back then I have the Cornell Bronze Dahlia, which I also oops, pruned and cut it pretty low before the wedding. And she's also going to see it opening up the center and making some pollen. So I hope that they cross these and Delinda's baby and this other one here, leaving them all to be pollinated by the bees and hopefully you have some cool seeds to save and have some nice varieties next year this sweet natalie here is looking beautiful this is a newer bloom but got a little damaged by the rain you see the petals look translucent this guy got very damaged by the rain but it's okay it was older anyway i have some blooms lots of buds in the dahlia so that's a good sign i hope that really they will open soon and i'll have a beautiful fall dahlia, gar dahlia garden which i really really hoped for but so far that's how it's looking like some stuff here is from the spring still, the fever few, and the straw flower that I also cut back is having a comeback. Second, nice, or my third or fourth, I don't know. This one produced so much flush. And there's another one here that's coming back as well. I planted this chocolate snake root in here when I came back from North Carolina. And then everybody's telling me, it's a weed, what to do? But I like that it's flowering late, and I like the color of the leaves. It is a native plant, so hopefully it's okay. Hopefully it doesn't take over everywhere, but I did do that and it's looking, I don't know, nice in my opinion. I like it. And I cleaned up a lot of the stuff back here, but still got some work to do. The calendula is kind of blooming back again too. Got knocked up by the rain also. And I'll probably have to take that out. But that's mostly what's happening here in the backyard that's a flower still there not looking great but i haven't cut it back yet needs to be out so lots of greens lots of foliage not a lot of flowers yet but we'll see maybe in october will be looking a little nicer now before we go to the plot for the second part of this garden tour i just want to give you guys an update on some past issues that we have been having. I have to admit that when I came back from vacation, I haven't had a lot of pest pressure here in the backyard. Not as much as I thought I would, at least. It's been looking kind of good. Other than the spider lanternflies, I have been noticing a little bit more of them now, especially this month in September. The past few weeks, I've been trying to stomp on them and try to control them that way. But I do have good news. We also saw a prey mantis the other day and I just learned that prey mantis actually eat the spotted lanternfly so that's a good thing I hope they're having a feast and they are helping us out with that issue as well and there is also of course the rat problem at the plot so if you haven't been following the videos unfortunately after we are gone for a while some rats took some residence in the plot to be honest with you we kind of always seen some mice or rats sometimes in the plot you know through these years but i've never seen burrows that's what i was worried about seeing them going around sometimes and they were trash in new york city go out in the streets that's just how it goes and it's kind of impossible to avoid that because we have to put our trash out it is known to be a problem in the city anyway but this summer has been a bit more evident i would say and after we were gone we did see some burrows in the plot garden i got a little freaked out about it so i'm still thinking about what to do i did talk to my neighbor and he says that it's not only us he's talking to a lot of people and a lot of people are having a hard time with them this year and especially this time so i haven't really checked after all this rain we literally had i don't know 10 7 days of rain with maybe a couple sunny days in between, but I didn't have time to go there. So we're both gonna be seeing how things are looking after the storm and with the rat problem. But let's go check it out how it's looking like right now. Let's check on the rat situation first, actually. The burrows are still looking like the field in. I see some scratching there, but I think it's from the squirrels. I'm actually gonna take a shortcut to go to the plot. That's how I've been coming here. Just jumping around and look at this first thing. Breakout dahlia. It's very beautiful. I always get distracted by the dahlias. Those are stunning. This is the first time I'm seeing this after all this rain and I can see that a few things fell, but 
Overall, it's not too bad. Most of the things I've left in here are the dahlias and a few flowers. I did stake them last time I was here, so they were able to sustain the rain. Look, there's a little bee over here resting on the arch. She's luggish. I think it's a little bit cold for them. Um, But I think I'm gonna harvest some dahlias as well. I have my clippers in here. You know, the water, the rain really do damage them. You see how the petals get all sort of translucent? That happens in here too. I'm not going to really save seeds from the dahlias here. I think they have a lot of open face dahlias on that side. I don't know, so I might actually harvest some of them today to bring in inside. But here, this is the area where Danny worked most of the other day to take out the rats they were kind of on this side here the burrows actually were all on this side here back there is a mess i'm not going to show you it's all weedy i mean I, I actually cut that back down but now just grew back again this is where all the zinnias were in the last video i came here and i clicked them out i left this little stumps in here but i gotta come and clean a little bit better this is a stock that is actually reblooming from the spring because a spray stock variety so that's exciting. I left that in there when I saw that she was growing well. And here are the two dahlia beds on this side. And you can see that some stuff here fell. I'm going to move around. But there's some broken stalks in here. And I haven't been here for a while. So they're kind of looking a little messy. But let's look at the next part of the garden. This big one over here that's kind of climbing on this trellis is the Marn Dahlia which is the first one that I actually grew last year in the same location. These ones are small, but they can get quite big too. Those are probably some side shoots. This one is a labyrinth dahlia. It's very pretty, but very heavily damaged with the rain, you see. Actually, because this one has two nice buds on the side, I'm gonna go ahead and take her out. But hopefully those buds will all open. Same with this one over here. I was planning to maybe take them home, but this one is a bit too damaged. I don't think I can save it, but I will cut it also. I'll just put it in here, actually. Give it to the compost, unfortunately. This one I could take home, but it needs to open a little bit more. Oh, I see a bug inside there resting. I'll let it rest a little bit. Dahlias don't open a lot as much after you cut them, so you have to kind of wait them to be like maybe three fourths of the way before you cut this little one here it's called fern cliff spice it's much smaller than i thought would be all of them has been small but they're very cute yellow with this little purple blue in them hopefully without this water that they got you know all this rain they will start blooming a little bit more and give us a few more flowers before the frost and back here we have this beautiful peaches and cream this one is one of my favorites, also damaged by the water, by the rain. This one might be okay. This one over here, but this is damaged. And this guy, I'm, I might try to save the seed pod, even though, you know, with all this water, I'm not sure if they got pollinated or not, but it's forming a seed pod here, kind of getting old. I'll let it be. And hopefully by next week, I can harvest some of these other ones, or a few days maybe. Over here, I have a Dahlia, look, check this out, that I thought the tuber was done, and then it's just, sprouting again it just took forever or sprouting now i must say maybe it was too shaded but i can see some leaf hopper damage so i don't know what she's gonna do there this one here it's very slow also these other two i've been harvesting this is a dark one called diva this one is a cornell so they both into the red side but no blooms on them right now oh actually check this out <laughs> there is a bloom fell here this is a Cornell, so this was from this plant that looks like it broke and somehow made it over there, but that's how the Cornell looks like. This one's here about to open too. I'm not sure if I've seen this one yet, it's taking very long, but my tag says it's a Hillcrest Sun Fusion and looks like it's a bit orange on the edges, so we'll see how she looks like. Inside here on this cage, it was a mess of tangled tomatoes and basil and lots of stuff. I cleared almost everything out. And I just want to point to you guys how many weeds are actually growing back. After all this rain, you see all these thousands of seedlings? This is what we have to deal with. It's 
kind of intense, labor intensive here during the summer because of all of these weeds. You can see that's everywhere. There's tons of weed seeds everywhere. Some of them are, I must say, seedlings, all these baby plants in there. Sometimes when I can't keep up with them, I go to seed and they blow the seeds everywhere. Right now it just like keeps, it's like a cycle. One day maybe we'll be able to have fewer of them, but for now it's really hard. Coming back here to this area, you can see the kale is putting up some more leaves. I have some peppers in there and the mummies in the back are starting to flower. Those nice red little flowers there. Those mums actually, I bought them for one dollar last year at Home Depot. They were tiny little plants at the end of the season. And I plant them without knowing if they will overwinter or not and check them out. They not only overwinter, they're looking amazing. So sometimes it's definitely worth to rescue some plants from the garden center. And there's another one over here also. This one is not as big, but it's from the same batch that I got. So here in this bed, I'm gonna go up here. Can't tell where it's bed and where it's pathway anymore. I have the dahlias that I have saved seed from last year from the Marne dahlia that you saw there, the orange. And they gave us this little baby. So all of them are babies, are daughters of the Marne dahlia. Look at the, they have some open centers in the bee slough. The ones that blow up the centers, which is pretty cool. I really like the color of this one and this one too. It's like a cantaloupe, like soft orange color. This one's more in the yellow. It's been blooming for a while. It's kind of twisted now. I can see the rain probably just, oops, knock it over, but it is what it is. All of this stuff here kind of in the end of its life. Then we have basil here on this side and I'm just gonna take it out. They're all getting yellow, it's too much water. I'm actually very happy to see that those holes are filled, that the rats are not there. We're still probably gonna try to set some traps around but again, I'm still deciding what to do with the airplane today. If you want to see how the garden was looking like by this time last year, I'm going to put a couple videos in here that you can watch next. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time.